Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today's tutorial is a really fun one. I'm gonna show you how you can style and how you can modify the text inside Read More Links for summary blocks. Now, this customization is going to apply to any type of summary block that you're using, whether that is carousel, grid, masonry, or list. And it's also going to work for Squarespace 7.0, Squarespace 7.1 Classic Editor, and Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine. So if this is something that you want to implement in your current client project, make sure to keep on watching to learn how to make it happen. Alrighty, so here I am in a 7.1 site and I have a summary block grid set on this page. Now, keep in mind that this customization is going to work for any sort of layout for the summary block, but I'm just going to be using the summary block grid as my example. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing in here is jumping into the custom CSS window to be able to style the read more links a little bit more. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have a little bit of sort of like a couple of comments up here just to make sure that I have the color that I want to use for my background and also the font family. So you can just ignore the code that I have there. Now let's go ahead and focus on the actual read more link. So the first thing that we need to do is basically find the way that we're going to be targeting these links so that we can style them however we want inside our custom CSS window. So I'm going to look here inside the inspect element tool. And then here you can see how I landed directly on the A element itself. So the link and this one has a class of summary read more link, which is pretty appropriate for what we're trying to do here. So let's go ahead and grab this little class in here. And I'm going to add that inside my custom CSS window. Now here, what you need to decide is whether you want to apply this customization to all summary blocks across the board, across your entire site, or if you want to make this customization specific for one block on the site. Now, in my case, I want this customization to apply only to the block that I'm seeing right now. So I'm going to look for the block ID to make sure that I'm narrowing down that customization to only target this particular block. So let's go ahead and look at the whole block here. So just to help you orient yourself a little bit here, you can see where we have the summer read more link. And then if we start going upwards, you can see how we have a couple of containers. So this one here is holding a bunch of stuff, including all of the different elements that we see here in the content, as well as that summer read more link. So I'm just going to close that up. And then if we move a little bit higher up, we can see that this one is just holding the thumbnail. And then if we go higher up, this is the whole summary item. And then if we go a little bit up, you can see how we have the following or the previous summary item. And then if we move higher up, we have a container holding everything. And then we just keep going. We can see a bunch of other sort of bigger containers that are holding the whole um, elements that we have in here inside the summary block. And the one that I want to find is this one up here that says SQS block. And then it has a couple of classes indicating that I'm working with a summary block. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the block ID from here, which is right there at the bottom. And I'm going to include that in my selector. So I'm going to place that at the beginning. And now I'm just targeting the summary read more links. So all of the buttons that I have within that particular summary block. So we're all set here. And just in case, if you want to test things out, what I recommend is just adding a quick background color just to see if you're targeting the thing that you want to target. So if we were to use in here background color red, you can see how that changes color there. So we know that we're set. All right, so let's go ahead and well get started with the background color. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this little hex code that I have there. So background color. And now we have that dark blue set there. Of course, the font is not really showing up at the moment. So let's go ahead and change that to color white. There we go. And now I don't want my button to be this wide. So I really want it to sort of shrink down to the size of the content that we have in here and of the content that we're going to have after we actually change that with the script. So let's go ahead and change here the display to inline block. And this is just going to automatically sort of shrink down the width of the button there to match the width of the content inside it. All right. So once we have that in place, I feel like the background color is just like way too close to the text. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding. So I'm going to be using here uh, maybe like one EM and two EM for the sides. All right. That looks pretty good. 
And then if we want to separate this a little bit more from the content at the top, what we could do is just add a little bit of a margin at the top. So let's say maybe like 10 pixels. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And now for the font family, because I want the font family to match the same one that I have up here, I'm going to go ahead and use this little value here. So let's go ahead and set, I can actually grab the whole thing. Um, let's go ahead and set here font family to uh, ITC Avantgarde Gothic Pro. And now I have the same look that I have for this button here. I feel like the font size may be a little bit off, but I don't mind it. I think it looks pretty good this way. So I'm just going to leave it that way. And now we're going to move to the good part. We're going to be changing the actual content that this button has. Now, the way that we can make this happen, there's actually sort of like a CSS hack that we can use to make this happen but I'm gonna show you how we can do it with the script because it's very simple, very quick, and very easy to modify. So what we need to do here is basically locate the container that actually carries the text that we're seeing at the moment. So if we take a look in here, we're going to see that we landed once again on that A element that has a class of summary read more link. And within the opening and closing tag of this A element is where we find the actual text. So the same thing that we have been styling so far is the same thing that we're going to be targeting via our script to be able to change the text that we see in here. So what I want to do here, because I want this customization to also apply only to this particular block, I'm going to go ahead and grab this selector. So the same one that we've been using so far, I'm going to grab the same thing because I only want to modify the text within summary read more links within this specific block. So I'm going to grab that, save this. And now let's go ahead and head over to settings, advanced and code injection. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this customization is that you're going to need to have the jQuery library loaded on your site. If you're already using third party plugins, it's very likely that you have a code that looks like this already on your site or something similar. Sometimes it can say ajax.googleappy, so that one works as well. If you don't have it, you can go ahead and grab this little script from the code that I have inside the blog post. Now, once we have that in place, we can go ahead and create the actual script that is going to change the text inside our buttons. So we're going to write in here our script tags. So now what we need to do in here is write our little function. So what our function is going to do is it's going to look for the same thing that we're currently targeting via CSS. So we're going to look for those summary read more link containers within the specific summary block. And then we're going to look for the text inside that specific container. So that's why it's very important to target the container that is actually holding the text that we're seeing on the screen. Because what we're going to do is we're going to replace that text with anything else that we want. So here in between quotes, we can just add pretty much anything that we want. So I'm just going to type in here, uh, let's say this is events. So let's say read I don't know if this is going to be too long, but let's test it out. Read the event summary. That's what I want my buttons to say. So now if I save this, you're going to see how automatically all of the content in there is going to change to whatever it is that you write in between the quotes in this little function. So this is a really easy way for you and even for your clients to be able to decide what you want your summary block read more buttons to say. So I actually think that this is a little bit too long. Read the event summary. So I'm just going to cut that off. Read the summary. Let's leave it like that. And then once I save again, you're going to see how now those buttons say what I have in here in between these quotes. And there you have it. That's how you can customize the read more summary block links across any Squarespace site that you're working with. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future customizations just like this one, and I will see you next time.